for confirmation purposes, you've got this nice strong breakout retest and look at what happens when we're above that whole time, you guys. Okay. Again, if you just buy when your weekly RSI is above 50 and sell when it goes below 50, you're doing pretty well up here. Everybody, thanks for joining me. Nebraskan Gunner here with Elevate Trading, and I'm going to talk about RSI today, which is Relative Strength Index. All right, I see a lot of talk on Twitter about RSI having bearish divergence during these big pumps and things like that, and I think a lot of people are misreading it and you know selling early or thinking that a trend is going to dip when it's really actually a strong trend and RSI is telling you that we're in a very strong trend, it's showing you strength and people are reading too much into this bearish divergence that ends up negating itself anyway. So let's get right into the charts and take a look. All right, so just real quickly, you guys, um, we'll see that right here, you'll just see this nice strength from RSI, right? And then look what price does this whole time. So that's very good strength. It's a really nice, strong move. Relative strength index. You hear me say that a million times. Um, and if you're shorting bearish divergences, if you guys don't know what a bearish divergence is, it's basically this. Price makes a higher high and the indicator makes a lower high. That is a bearish divergence. All right. But... That is a major, that is a major bearish divergence. But if you're shorting all these other bearish divergences, look, I mean, you've got, or shorting or selling or whatever, you've got a bearish divergence here probably. And we can go, you could go to lower time frames and look at it too. All right, you've got a bearish divergence here probably. Definitely here. Okay. So you've got a bearish divergence here. Um, so you guys need to understand that these aren't always bearish signs. And actually this, break up here is a bullish sign. Not only that, but it's actually just a bullish sign to be above 50 to 55 area. Okay. So 50 to 55 area right around here. All right. When you're above there, you're basically bullish. So let's just take a look here real quick. And we're going to highlight these regions in, we'll say green because we like green. So we're going to go here to here. All right. Notice how when RSI is above this zone, look how freaking bullish we are, you guys. It's awesome. Okay. We got a nice little peak here, a little fake out, just barely. All right. It was a quick one, but I mean, still not a terrible spot to buy, right? Um, but here you go again for confirmation purposes. You've got this nice strong breakout retest and look at what happens when we're above that whole time, you guys. Okay. Again, if you just buy when your weekly RSI is above 50 and sell when it goes below 50, you're doing pretty well up here. All right. Again, I've got another one here. Okay. And of course you're going to get little fake outs and things like that. So you want to see some sustained movement here and you need to use other, other types of technical analysis to really confirm or deny these types of things. But you'll see here how absolutely bullish things are looking when this weekly RSI holds up above just the 50 point, okay? So that's just the brief overview. In a post I made about this, I actually told everyone to get rid of your oversold territory up here and actually move that level to 50 because your strength lies above 50 as you see here. So let's take this a step further and let's see where we're actually at when RSI is above our over, overbought territory, okay? Because everyone says it's overbought, it needs a pullback. It does not need a pullback when it's overbought. All right, so here's just three of them. Let's take this down a notch and let's do a line. So let's go a line here when it was overbought, okay? Right when it crossed, right about here where it crossed. Uh, most of you are probably saying, oh, well, Gooner, I don't just sell when it crosses that line. I'm just saying it's overbought this whole time. Look, we got a pullback. Okay, look, as soon as you get this overbought, that's just strength. That's just showing you strength. It's showing you kind of like a momentum, all right? And this is awesome. This is good confirmation for people that have been long or have bought spot buys down here. This is actually good confirmation. If you bought down here anywhere, you bought when it was below and you get above this 50 mark, that's good confirmation to keep holding your ad to your position. And then when you get up here, here, it's another keep holding my position. All right. And you see this. Why would you sell when we get into overbought territory? I mean, obviously, eventually you're going to want to sell on overbought territory, but you don't just want to sell on your first bearish divergence because there's one and there's one and you're missing out on this whole move of 1200% if you're just going off this bullish or, you know, this oversold territory. And even right here, you guys, before this big breakout, you would have been having bearish divergence probably pretty much all the way up until 
like right here, right? So you can see that this is actually a sign of strength. And you'll notice that every time we cross, we've got a 75% pop, we've got a 1500 or more percent pop, and then we've got another 700% pop. You see over here, similar things, all right? When we crossed above, we were getting these big pushes. And now, similar thing here, we crossed above right here, okay? And everyone's been talking about over, overbought, overbought, overbought and we're up now over 100% from that. Now we are reaching max levels. This isn't gonna be a TA video per se, um, but that's something to keep an eye on for historical max levels, but that doesn't mean too much right now. Um, so my point here was let's get our upper band down to 54, I, somewhere between 50 and 55, okay? It's never gonna be exact, but I like to do around 54. Um, it seems to work out pretty well on most assets. And you might find different assets that it works a little bit better. So now my upper band now much lower and I've got a lot of strength up here now and it's showing me this strength of trend rather than overbought or oversold. Now I'm just saying that I'm in a strong trend above here and we've already highlighted this. This is my strong trend. This is my strong trend. And technically buying these dump these drops to this line has been a really good buying opportunity. So you can see here, all these dips to this line were actually really good buying opportunities. That one even, that was our last drop, um, which was scary to everyone, but obviously we didn't even drop very far when you zoom out, right? And now you see that we're just taking off. We would love to see another drop to this trend line. We may end up getting a fake out at some point. You see just like a couple little tiny fake outs here. You got a fake out here. Okay, so we could see a fake out there. That's more than likely a very good buying opportunity. We've sustained above this now for a long period and we actually consolidated above it, which is even better for confirmation because really, if you notice here, right, we didn't really consolidate above it. We broke above it and kept going and we dropped back down. Broke above it, dropped back down. Now we broke above it, consolidated, consolidated, and then we broke up again. So that's almost like a reaccumulation period. Whereas you can see here, we did the same thing. We broke above it, hung above it, and took off, retested, retested. Um, here, same thing. We broke above it, consolidated, broke above it again, retested with a little fake out, continued on. So these stronger trends you're getting are when you're consolidating above it and you're building strength here. This is called a reaccumulation, and this is a building of strength. All right. This is where you're building up for a powerful move. This doesn't have much buildup for a powerful move. This one didn't have any buildup. It broke back down. This one tried to consolidate. And if this would have consolidated above here longer and broke upward, you would have seen a continuation of strong move. Instead, it consolidated above and broke down. Again, you can see here, even just below here, we consolidated below and we broke down for a strong move. All right. This, we didn't consolidate down below. We broke down and broke right back above. Um, here again, we didn't really consolidate below, right? We broke down, hit it, broke back above. So it's more of a choppy scenario. This was actually sustained bear market. This was actually sustained bear market when you spent months below it. Okay, we're gonna put this red, spent months consolidating below this and it ended, ended up in extended bear market. We spent months consolidating below it here and broke down and you saw extended bear market here, okay? Um, this one, again, just barely broke it down, broke right back up on this second retest. So no consolidation below. So what you're gonna do when you're looking to buy dips on these strong trends in the bullish territories, you're gonna look for bullish divergence. Bullish divergence is when you have a higher low on your indicator like this, okay? So you see how my indicator made a higher low and my price made a lower low. So price went down, indicator went up, and those are gonna be your best optimal buy opportunities in a bull market. And you see here again, we kind of have one. If you say that this is kind of trending down here, right here. So those are gonna be your best buying times is gonna be on that bullish divergence in these zones. And then obviously buying bullish divergence out of these lower zones as well, if you're looking for catching bottoms or accumulation zones. So you can see here for an accumulation zone, you actually don't always wanna buy just the first break below because again, this is just showing you bearish strength, right? Bearish strength of trend. But once you see a trend start to show uptrend here out of the oversold territory is what it's called. Um, then you can see here that you can build those strong moves again here. And for Bitcoin, it likes to barely peak below that. You're seeing this trend where it just barely likes to peak below and that's pretty much the bottom, right? Um, and you can see it building strength out of that zone. Um, but for some assets, you'll actually see, and we'll probably see this on a lot of altcoins, 
is you'll actually see them hit this zone and then slowly trend up or they'll hit this zone and then they'll kind of hang out in it a little bit and then they'll start to slowly trend up. And while they're doing that, they could be creating some bullish divergence on price. And then we get this accumulation zone and then it pops up and our RSI pops up and then you get into that strength zone of confirmation. But yeah, I hope that helps you guys out a little bit. That's basically my my recommendation for using RSI in a bullish trend, finding that 50 mark a little bit higher or lower depending on the asset. Some assets will make just a little bit different area, a support area. But otherwise, if you just zoom out, Look at your RSI on a very analytical level like this. It's not going to steer you wrong too often. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content. I'm going to keep educational videos coming out to you guys. And I've got a lot more stuff coming out uh, next year in January. So stay tuned. Thanks. Titties.